it is up to what provider we choose so the cloud architecture of the oracle is a three tier architecture so in the first tier we have the applications like we have hcm family we have crm family we have the supply chain family grc these are all the various product application families in the first layer and in the second layer we have the fusion middleware most of you must have heard this word middleware so middleware is the backbone for the saas so if we want to have the saas we should have the middleware so that middleware consists of all the servers okay like your oracle web center http server your um, enterprise content management okay your business intelligence all this information is associated in the middleware and then as usual we have the database so this is the three tier architecture of oracle cloud now <coughs> oracle has come out with the fusion applications in 2010 so we are on 2017 now so in between we have seen lot of organizations lot of customers adopted the cloud applications whether it is hcm or finance or whatever the case may be but when oracle brought in the cloud applications into the market they have given three choices to the customers choice of adoption scenarios one is do nothing no immediate plans for fusion so there is a customer who is running on e business there may be another customer who is running on cbel so let them continue i don't want to move to the fusion applications or cloud applications customer is happy with cbel or e business fine what it means is oracle is not going to stop e business or cbel or people soft development and the support they are going to continue them so those customers who don't want to move to the cloud let them continue with the traditional applications which they were happy okay those oracle is not forcing anybody okay we have come out with the fusion application so all the customers those who are using ebs people soft must move there is nothing like that okay that is one thing second thing is coexistence scenario so you don't want to move from the core e business or core people soft but you want to try say for example one customer is having the hcm core with the e business okay their entire people their work structures everything is in e business and they don't have the compensation module implemented yet now they are planning to implement compensation so they can go with ebgs compensation but now oracle will tell okay if you are okay with ebgs compensation implementation go ahead fine otherwise in cloud also we have compensation module so why don't you try that keep your core hr in ebusiness only but try out the cloud compensation so that is a coexistence model so even that can be done same way talent management and the third scenario is replacement scenario pillar or suite so one customer is having financials hcm crm everything in ebs now the customer wants to move the entire finance pillar from ebs to cloud or hcm pillar from ebs to cloud other things they want to continue in ebs only but one pillar complete product family they want to move even that is also fine so these are the choices available for the customers those who are presently customers for oracle so which way they want to go they can go so if they adopt coexist model which is very popular actually because many customers don't want to immediately move entirely to the cloud but they want to try out what is there in the cloud so that is where the coexistence model was given so your core hr may be uh, time and labor payroll benefits everything is in people soft or e business but they don't have presently talent management they don't have presently compensation now they want to try out them in stuff e business or people soft from the cloud so hr to hr interface we call it so your core hr will be in ebs or people soft but your compensation and talent etc can be taken from the fusion so plug and play model is available 
and these are the some of the technologies used while developing the fusion applications so adf application development framework is used for user interface technologies that is the front end applications what a user will see user will interact that is what we call it as user interface back end technologies orchestration technologies soa service oriented architecture okay security platform security services and also oracle uses the enterprise scheduler service for running the request and reports and bpm business process management for approvals so these are the some of the underlying technologies which were used while building the fusion applications yeah uh then i have a question in uh, yeah. uh, one thing suppose like uh, uh, suppose in like api uh, i mean people soft actually like uh, mm-hmm. suppose like my company is integrating core hr and bridges and payroll now they want to uh introduce like a compensation module mm-hmm. so so if like uh, if the, like uh, actually if uh, uh, or the client is hosting uh, go with the uh, cloud right mm-hmm. so like main the main core data is maintained in the people soft Mm-hmm. right compensation yeah. like uh, actually for compensation module the core hr uh, data is required to integrate with the compensation correct right so like to integrate that part right like uh, they, they they might be like a uh, actually is providing some kind of a interfacing uh, kind of thing to integrate the compensation module yeah. is that like you know uh, like a uh, 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 that means like uh, it's a two way communication not one way communication yeah definitely it is two that's right. why if you see this figure hr to hr interface it is showing up as well as down so employees are residing in your people soft application whereas okay. the compensations what you are going to give them the award say salary hike you are going to give from the compensation module which is in the cloud so the employee data will move from core hr to cloud and there on the compensation worksheet if you are a little familiar with compensation you know the term worksheet the worksheet is the place where the managers will allocate the awards in the compensation module so on the worksheet the employee data will reflect so that data will be taken from the core people soft application and will reflect in the compensation there the awards will be given and the given award should come back to the people soft because you may be using the people soft payroll to make the payments yeah. exactly so my yeah my question here is like you know they want to uh, 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 like uh, like implement uh, like you know uh, the interfaces in both the people soft as well as the like you know uh, the uh, cloud area right hmm. suppose like uh, in this case like uh, might be like uh, actually uh, like uh, we need uh, some customizations on the like uh, our delivered processes right so suppose like my company wants only some uh, like some level of data Mm-hmm. but like you know oracle uh, like uh, the interfaces like you know they are using like uh, uh, like uh, already like you know they depend like uh, uh, all and and pairs like you know uh, like in the interfacing uh, now, like what you know, data element. should come how so, much level of data should come these are all configurable when you are implementing the uh, cloud compensation so you have to configure the worksheet display what what information of the employee should come there you want only employee last name and uh, employee id not the employee's uh, job related information or anything you can very well do that that is a configuration option available okay okay yeah right so venkat okay uh, yeah venkat i have one question uh, so you said coexistence right so in coexistence do we need to have take help from oracle development or No, that we interface will be that. provided directly by Oracle during implementation. Okay, but the training and support, the, uh, or the client has to get their own support people to do the coexistence implementation. Yeah, implementation team will do that, but Oracle also will be in the in the implementation partner, okay, and they will provide that interface. Then onwards, it becomes a routine. Just you move the data and uh, start working with the applications. they will run some services so we have background so always your data interface between hr to hr will happen we need not to specifically do anything we have to schedule jobs daily jobs for yes those? yes uh, yeah yeah daily jobs has to be yeah. scheduled that's what when i say okay. uh, running the some services back end okay so venkat just an estimate how many how how many days it does this type of project takes if you want to use coexistence 
Uh, it depends upon <laughs> how many is so like if you are only doing coexistence for compensation right. already your uh, core HR data is in place yep. people software e-business it is not going to take more than four to six weeks okay okay so we can budget for four to six weeks yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That is one of the uh, advantage why customers are now looking for cloud is the implementation time drastically reduces. That's, that's yeah, that's correct. Yeah, the implementation times are down a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so the fusion enterprise structure, just I will give you very briefly. Okay, what is fusion enterprise structure is. Now fusion has come out with something called enterprise because as I said earlier in one of the slide global enterprises nowadays the business is a global business. So most of the business is spread across the boundaries of the country. So you have global business. So the business of a customer is recognized as a enterprise. Okay, for example, let us take Oracle itself. Oracle is a global enterprise because Oracle presence is there throughout the globe okay but oracle is headquartered in us which is oracle corporation so the enterprise is oracle enterprise in this example abc enterprise but the entire business goes on the name of oracle corporation okay we call it as ultimate holding company okay which is on the top so enterprise acts like a boundary so when you construct a house you will have a boundary wall so your enterprise is a boundary inside which all your other structures will be available so abc enterprise is the enterprise which acts like a boundary within which abc corporation is the legal entity which we call it as ultimate holding company on whose name the entire business runs and suppose this abc corporation is operating in two different products they have chemicals they have cements okay so in fusion or hcm cloud we call them as divisions so cements division and chemicals division which are not specific to any country okay you can do chemical business in india you can do chemical business in singapore you can do cements business in us you can do cements business in uk or china whatever the case may be so divisions are not any country specific that is your product then that product which you operate in each country will be a legal entity because whenever you want to do business in any country you need to take permissions from that governments and legally you are bound to produce some fiscal reports to the government so abc cements india is a legal entity abc chemicals india is a legal entity abc chemicals singapore is a legal entity so that whenever you want to see how my cements business is performing you have to roll up the results or consolidate the results of abc cements india and abc cements singapore so that the cements division's performance will be known so those are the individual legal entities and below each legal entity you will have your departments and all those stuff that's how the structure has been designed so whenever we implement hcm cloud applications we need to look at the customer's business and accordingly we need to build those informations and in the bottom if you see color coded in a different way that is legislative data group so whenever you have the business you will have the resources your employees and you have to pay them so you need to have a payroll but when it comes to the payroll payroll is specific to country right if you are working in india and drawing salary definitely you need to pay taxes as per the indian government legislation rules and regulations so though your organization is a global organization your enterprise is a global enterprise your business is global but when it comes to the payments and the related taxation you must be country specific so in this example even though you have cements as a separate legal entity you have a chemicals separate legal entity both are in india and your employees working whether in cements or chemicals they have to pay the taxes as per the indian legislation so there is legislative data group which partitions the data specifically for the payroll and the taxation same way if you have other country operations you need one legislative data group which is mainly required for the payroll 
So here we can see little description on those areas. Enterprise, it replaces the e-business business group as a primary data partition. Those who are from e-business background, you must be knowing in e-business, you will have a business group, which is country specific. And the data partition happens from business group to business group. Now there is no more business group in Fusion. It's only enterprise. So enterprise to enterprise data partition happens. So one customer, one enterprise within that enterprise, which acts like a boundary within which you have all your data resides. Okay. So it's strengthened to support multi-tenancy requirements. It has no cross enterprise data or process because enterprise to enterprise partitions happen. And the enterprise structure supports one global version of all work structures and people. Whereas the legislative data group is country specific data partition within the enterprise. So your enterprise may be working in five countries or presence in five countries. But for each country, you have the employees who take the payments and supposed to pay the taxes. So for that purpose, even though your enterprise is one within the enterprise, the data partition happens based on the to data groups specifically when you are implementing the payroll because the taxation part is specific to country okay so this is how we have the enterprise structure available with your divisions legal entities and the legislative data groups we'll see some more in depth uh, when we actually go with the core hr part how these things will be implemented and we'll do some activities also accordingly right now if you have any primary questions on this just let me know Hey Venkatesh, Ravindir. Yeah. Venkatesh, uh, you told me that uh, if uh, one person uh, present in India mm -hmm. and uh, India legislates to, and after some times, many men decide to move in Singapore, mm -hmm. then how, how can they move? Yeah, there is a global transfer procedure is available. You're asking me on the transaction level. <laughs> yeah, that is always possible. As long as you are working for the same enterprise, the moment is quite yeah, possible. Like that, in, like that in a EBS, uh, uh, cross business move is there. Yeah, okay. that's what business global move. transfer we call it in EBS, global transfer. So you have to move the employee from one business group to another business group. Right? Same way uh, here also we have the global number, transfer. Employee number, employee number must be same and taxation and all things is according to legislation. Yeah. See, once an employee moves from India to Singapore, then uh, as long as he is drawing payment out of India, that LDG is India LDG and taxation is accordingly. When you move them to Singapore, definitely now that taxation will be applicable. Right. Okay. When, when they, they move, there is a one process there to end the, all the uh, dues and uh, sales process stop in India and start with Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, you have to end a team in uh, India and uh, yeah. that up. process is separate. That's why I told there is a process called global transfer that will take care of those things. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this all this four structure uh, enterprise division legal entity and legislative all are mandatory or is it like optional? No, nothing is mandatory. Uh, especially mm -hmm. divisions are not mandatory. LDGs are not mm -hmm. mandatory. If you don't have payroll application, you don't need LDG at all. Okay. So legal entity in enterprise uh, will be mandatory. Yeah, mandatory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you.